I'm going to show you how I made my largest painting ever of my cats. I start with a really good reference photo and I think that's the first and very best tip that you need to keep in mind if you're thinking of painting your cat. The thing is is that the reference photo is so important because you look at it while you paint and if you can learn to be able to copy what you see in the photo through your hand and the paint onto the canvas, then you can make an amazing cat painting. I chose to use this photo as my reference because my cats are looking so adorable and they are both looking directly at the camera. The next step is to make an underdrawing. You can use tracing paper if you don't have drawing skills. And in fact, I would suggest doing that because it saves time and it makes your accuracy better. I always paint the eyes and the nose first. That way I can connect with the animal right away as I start painting it. Plus, I found that if the eyes and nose are wonky, it's so much better to fix them at this stage before you have a lot of paint added to the canvas. Because once you add all the layers of paint, and then if you have to change the placement of the eye or the nose, it's gonna create a lot more issues because then you're gonna have to create more layers of paint to cover up where you had moved it. Whereas if you just fix it to begin with before you add any paint around it, then you'll know it's in the right area. You still might have to touch up later after you add more areas of paint, but it at least you'll know that the eyes and nose are in the right place. I paint in acrylics. I like Dick Blick acrylics. I also use Liquitex and Golden from time to time. Next, I paint the background, and a lot of times I do this with the canvas laying down flat, but this isn't any reason why you would need to do this. You could paint it all sitting upright on an easel. The thing is, is that I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which causes a lot of issues for me. Basically, I have tendonitis in every joint in my upper extremities on both sides. I also have tendonitis in my legs in several locations. So the thing is, is that for me, any way that I can change up the positioning of my painting is good. So I've learned that if I do the backgrounds while laying down, that uses different muscles in my arms than if I paint sitting up. step is to move the painting back into an upright position and then start filling in the areas of color. I use an intuitive process when I decide to choose which color to use. Ultimately, I'm trying to allow the animal's soul to shine through along with how they look in real life. So I'm showing the joy and the love inside each animal's soul with my rainbow colors because to me, that's what it feels like. have my kitty best friend Mr. Samadhi in my studio with me hanging out while I paint. Of course he's one of the subjects of this painting. The other cat is my kitty panda bear. He's a Manx. You can see the little fluff ball of a tail he has there because Manx cats don't have a long tail like other cats. Over 
overall, this painting took me about three weeks to paint. Now this is quite long for me. Usually I make a painting anywhere from one to two weeks, but since it was such a large painting, it took a little extra time and I am so happy that I spent the time on it because I love this painting. If you'd like to learn more about my favorite brushes to use for animal noses and whiskers, watch this video. All right, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.